And, uh, and good evening. And a good evening it really is because we're here to celebrate all the babies who have been saved from abortion and who will be saved by the power of prayer. We must always remember that God can do all things. He tells us in the Bible, ask and you shall receive. And if you were at church today or yesterday in a Catholic church, you will notice that the gospel deals directly with perseverance in prayer. Now, prayer is so important, but we must do something. Here in Canada, the pro-life movement is made up much like a shamrock. There is a stem that attaches us all together, and that's the belief that all human life must be protected from the moment of conception until natural death. The first leaf on the shamrock is the education end. This here in Ottawa is um, covered by Action Life, Life Canada, um, Show the Truth, Silent No More, any of these organizations that have a mandate to change hearts and minds so that abortion will become unthinkable. There are groups at the university level, there's abortion, Ottawa against abortion. Any one, any one of these is trying to change hearts and minds. The next leaf of the shamrock is the service group. This is the group that helps women who have unplanned pregnancies, who are considering abortion, who need practical things such as baby clothes and high chairs for the new little one that's coming. The help group also has Rachel's Vineyard, which is a group that helps post-abortive women. You will notice that it doesn't matter who you are, there is a group of pro-lifers who are willing to help. Unfortunately, we shouldn't have to have these groups. Everyone should be pro-life. But until we come to that idyllic state, we must work and work very hard to instill the pro-life message. The third leaf of the shamrock is the political leaf. Now, originally this was carried on by Coalition for Life. In 1978, Cardinal Carter in Toronto asked Jim Hughes to set up an ad hoc committee to bring abortion into the election campaign coming up. So Jim started a small group. At the end of the election, the group did not disband. It grew and grew. And then in the late 80s and early 90s, Coalition for Life and Campaign Life joined together and now it's Campaign Life Coalition. Now their mandate is to get and uh, members of parliament and members of provincial parliament and councillors and trustees and even dog catchers elected who are pro-life. Because even a, lo a dog catcher, once he realizes that the power isn't there, he may run for council or he may run for the, pro the provincial parliament or even the federal parliament. So everyone who runs should be vetted to see if they are pro-life. Now, the mandate of all these groups is to get protection for the unborn child, for all human beings, from conception to natural death. The mandate has not changed, but the way we do this has evolved. In the beginning, in the 70s, we wrote letters to the editor. We had small rallies in front of churches. We had small rallies at the Supreme Court, Parliament Hill. Um, in our local offices, we had lots of pro-life material. Students would come in to pick up the material. Um, we would go into the high schools and the universities and teach about the uh, humanity of the unborn and the horror of abortion. But things have changed. We still need to write letters to the editor and we still have to rally. But Students don't come into our offices anymore. All their pro-life material they get on the internet, at their fingertips. Now, the problem is not everything on the internet is true. 
And so we have an obligation that when we hear something that is not true, to stand up and correct the misinformation. And sometimes as a pro-lifer, that's the hardest thing to do. When you're in a group at the water fountain at work and you hear someone talk about the products of protection or a blob of tissue, you have to stand up and say, oh, do you mean the unborn baby? Right now, before Parliament, there is a bill called Cassie's and Molly's Law. And it is the, um, I don't know the whole political part of it, but the pro-choice are very upset with this law. It has not been passed yet, it's just a bill. But they're very upset with the wording because the wording says unborn baby, unborn child. And the pro-choicers say they're trying to instill humanity into the unborn. We don't have to instill humanity into the unborn. Every unborn child is a human being deserving of protection forever. Now, the, because of how we've had to change, we have websites, we tweet, we do memes, which I have no idea what they are, but Alyssa does. We're reaching more and more people, but um, we still have a long, long way to go. Now, how did we get to this point? How did we get to the point that our mandate has evolved? It's still the same mandate in the beginning, but it has now in evolved to include things such as same-sex marriage, the sexualization of our children through the sex